Good to have you back. Still is the breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa and it's time for Off the Press. So we have a quick review of the major news stories making the headlines across the country this morning. And we would like to say good morning and welcome to Aisha Yesufu who is joining us to share her thoughts on these stories. Thank you very much Aisha for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. All right, we'll start with the Punch newspaper. What we'll do this morning is I'll just read out the headlines and you take the ones that you want to speak on. Fair deal? Okay. Um, Ami makes a U-turn, appears before Lagos panel Saturday. That's on the Lekki shootings. Uh, two riders to that story. All inquiries should be directed to panels, says 81 Division spokesman. Sass killed my husband. Asked me to remarry, widow tells committee. Just beside the masthead, we have 11 billion naira padding uncovered in Femmer's budget, MD disowns hike. 1.3 billion naira approved for Villa Clinic, too small, that's according to the permanent secretary. And then above the masthead, we have COVID-19 cases, Nigerians, others barred from China. Six states result hold U.S. presidential poll winner. And then we will begin oil exploration in Chad Basin soon. That's uh, according to the federal government. The details of that story is on page 21 of the paper. And then there is that uh, fire incident at the Oando tank farm in Lagos, Ijora area, on the front page, hopefully. Um, every, nobody lost their lives there. Uh, court dismisses Ojudu's suit against Ekiti, APC leadership. Immigration holds on to NSAD's promoter's passport. Fleeing suspected killer of oil 12-year-old arrested in Ogun. And then there's something from El Rufai who says... Nigeria reacting, Nigeria rather, reaching maximum borrowing capacity. That's uh, from the Kaduna State Governor. Nigeria reaching maximum borrowing capacity. Aisha, over to you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you uh, so much. Uh, as I don't have the newspaper with me, I'll try to remember the, 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 the headlines that you've uh, read out. Uh, you, you could just tell me the ones you remember, I'll remind you. Okay, so first off, I, I'm going to talk about the one of the military uh, doing a U-turn and appearing at, at the panel. Beyond just appearing at the panel is that the, the, the panel wanted access to the MOOC and, and, and other places. Have they given that access? And also, even if they have given that access, how are we sure that something hasn't gone uh, 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 on their hand or something? So this, we're supposed to have transparency and accountability in this panel, but unfortunately, uh, the players that are supposed to do that really uh, aren't uh, doing that as, as much as, as they should. And then um, the next thing is going on to the fact that the Nigeria Immigration Service is still holding on to the passport of, uh, of Mo. And the, the question is, what has she done? If, if there's anything, tell her what you're investigating her for. You can't have somebody's passport for almost a week now, and there's nothing. And just because she was, she, she was an NSAS uh, a, a member, a protester, and she had organized for lawyers who were unlawfully detained by, by the state she, for them to be released. Is that a crime? In what way is, 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 is that a crime at all? And so it, it's really sad that at this moment you have, we are 13 people who are bandits, who have killed Nigerians. They say they lay down their guns and they are taken to government houses. And the citizens who simply said that, uh, peacefully demanded and said they should not be killing them, they are the ones that are being punished as it is uh, right now. Uh, and then the, on the issue of uh, the uh, governor of Kaduna State, who is talking about the, the budget and that we are reaching maximum capacity. The other day we saw reports that he was crying over the Lagos burning and all of that. Can please, can somebody please tell Nasser El Rufai that people are being killed in his state. People are being kidnapped in his state. 
life doesn't have any value in his state. Why is he not talking about the lives that are being killed in his state? The primary responsibility of government is the protection of lives and properties. And Nasir Erufai isn't doing any of that, isn't talking about that, isn't going to the pres president to tell him to secure his state. And that is not acceptable at all. All right. I, I don't know if you, you are familiar with the um, story about the Villa Clinic. The story is 1.3 billion naira approved for Villa Clinic. Too small. That's according to the permanent secretary. Remember, there's a, a, back, to, a back to this story. Uh, the Senate committee saying um, if these monies are expended to you know, upgrade the facility, we must do everything possible to ensure that uh, the president and his uh, principal agents don't go outside the country uh, for medical care? Well, uh, the first thing I'm going to say is that we, we, we have a government where there's no sincerity or purpose. We have a government that is reckless in its spending. Over the, this, uh, there's no, we don't have many Nigerians actually borrowing to service debt. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that for Nigerians to actually understand the enormity of that all. And yet, we've not been able to reduce the cost of governance. Uh, money is being spent anyhow. You have, you know, three for of spending being, uh, be, being put, put out there. It, it's really sad. On the one of the National Assembly saying that, uh, uh, the president shouldn't go for medical tourism. Well, I hope they are, they, they are able to get that through because that's actually supposed to be the job of the National Assembly. They're supposed to checkmate the executive and ensure that things are being done in accordance to what is supposed to be for the country. We do not see any reason why huge amounts of money are budgeted for the uh, hospital in the villa, and yet they do. There no nothing is there. The last time we heard the wife of the president complaining about there not being anything, uh, drugs and whatever, yet some of these, this hospital, the budget is more than even some of the teaching hospitals combined together that we have. And yet upon all of that, the president sees those medical tourism, not just the president, almost all of them, they, they do that. People who want to do medical tourism on their own bill, they are free to do it. They, as long as it's money, are you, are you a office, uh, public office holder, and you're using state money, it's not acceptable. It shouldn't be. All right. Um, let, let's move over to the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Some of the stories you can find over there. Uh, the, one of them I'm going to take is a pretty sad story. And it says, my husband's corpse still missing after three years of arrest by SARS, wife tells Anambra panel. It's just a reminder that these panels of uh, inquiry are going on in other states besides Lagos. Um, and so we should be getting stories from, you know, the states in the country. So once again, my husband's corpse still missing after three years of arrest by SARS, wife tells Anambra Pano. Uh, all right. Also, uh, Biden closer to victory as Trump mounts legal challenges. Uh, 9.8 million people in the FCT and uh, 16 states suffer from uh, hunger, FAO says. It also says that 13.9 million people projected to go hungry in 2021. 2020 budget, uh, finance, works, and uh, ministries uh, inflated our budget by 11 billion naira, Fema tells reps. Fear grips Enugu communities as strange disease claims 50 lives. And also China bars Nigeria and others over COVID-19. Uh, one or two other stories, INEC postpones by-election in 11 states. And on 2023, PDP faces dilemma over possible APC Southern presidential candidate. Uh, why Atiku Ekweme Alliance collapsed in 2003, says former President Ulushegun Obasanjo. All right, so let's uh, quickly go ahead, uh, Aisha Yusufu. Which of the stories would you like to treat? I think I, I'm going to look at the, uh, the the SARS story, the one coming out from the panel. I think I, even from the the other newspaper that was read earlier, where we saw a woman who said uh, SARS killed her husband, and then they asked her to go and remarry. And then, of course, we are hearing this one three years after the cops have not been released. I mean, the, the kind of atrocities that SARS have done should have Nigerians aghast. I don't know whether we need to start teaching empathy, classes on empathy in, in Nigeria, because people just seem to think that as long as it has not affected them, everything is okay. They do not understand the father. Every one of us is just a, a, a minute away from being a victim, and it just happened. You have situations, the harrowing stories that are coming out 
on all the things that SARS have done and the, the, the impunity with the presence within with which they carried out all of this is what is really mind boggling. And what is very painful is the fact that at the end of the day, when people are indicted by this panel, they might come and challenge the legality of the panel. We're already hearing that uh, we, without the uh, governing council, the National Human Rights Commission, I cannot set up a panel. Uh, so at the end of the day, you know, with all of these atrocities, people want to have justice. They come out, they share their story, which is painful for them every time they have to relieve those stories. And then yet people end up getting scot free because of some technicalities here and there. And then looking at it also, a lot of panels have gone on before this, yet uh, nobody's in, uh, people are indicted and then there's no punishment. There are, some of them are still even in service being promoted. All right. Also, I, I want to also ask, uh, still speaking on the panel, uh, if we have a panel that isn't assisted uh, uh, by forensic and crime scene investigators, what are they possibly going to find when they go to places like the morgue and go to the Lekki Toll Gate and on some of these places? Uh, what can they possibly probe? I mean, you, you've said it all. With, without real uh, uh, forensic investigation, really there's not much that you're going to do because at the end of the day, uh, it, it, it comes from the fact that there are certain uh, evidences that you need uh, to be backed by in either science, uh, forensic evidence that, that needs to be, you need them in the court. And so for now, I think it's more of, of the way the panel is set up, uh, more of the like a truth and uh, uh, reconciliation kind of thing where people are going to talk, maybe in, in, the, case of, in the course of cross-examination, they will be able to bring out certain things. But of course, we need those uh, 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 forensic ev evidence. And uh, I think basically they, they might have some, because when you go to the, even when you go to the morgue and you see some bodies, you need to be able to extract, if there are bullets in there or one or two uh, uh, such things, you need to be able to extract them. You, they need to be able to do ballistic testing to be able to show where these bullets came out from. Is it the army issued uh, bu uh, bullets or whatever it is? I mean, in terms of, you know, fighting crime, it, it, there's a forensic level to it, there's a scientific level to it, and there's so many things uh, that, 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 that needed to be done to be able to get evidence. But yeah, because we live in a place where we are still doing policing as if it, it is the 19th century, not even the 20th century, we've not moved on ahead of time. There are a lot of things, even the autopsies, beyond the autopsies, the ballistic testing, there's so many things that can be done to, to get evidence. And these are ways of job creation. If we are a state really that wants to bring our, our police to the level uh, at which other uh, right. police are in, in the world, there okay. are a lot of things that we need to do. And that's what all of this answers is all about in terms of reforming the police, in terms of giving them the equipment and everything they need to be able to work very well in terms of looking after their welfare. I just don't understand why they are not saying it right. and saying the people also, who are actually demanding for them as enemies. Also, the death of 50 plus people in Enugu State, uh, should this normally be a, a, a cause uh, for national attention? Um, can you, say, can you say that again? The story from Enugu State, you know, saying that 50 plus people have died from a, a strange disease. Uh, oh. should, shouldn't this be, a, you know, enough reason for national attention to be focused on Enugu right now? Of course, it should be any, any kind of death. I mean, I don't know why we become so uh, uh, sensitized to the fact of killings and everything. And it should worry everyone, especially I think you're, I'm just getting to hear this now, although I'm not very, you know, like I always say, media, this thing, that, the news. But it, it's, it's something that should worry everyone. I mean, some, and to find out what is going on, do we have a kind of, strange uh, strain uh, the, uh, disease coming on or is it is it what kind of death is it is it caused by someone is it killing so did they just die are they together i don't have the background uh, uh, story or, on this i would have loved to All know right. more. I, I'm, I'm sure you will catch up a little later but just to yeah. give you a heads up there is also a similar um, uh, scenario playing out in delta states we we hear that the numbers are going up 
Uh, nobody, I mean, the, I think a sister station uh, did um, a report on the strange deaths that is being um, found in Delta and Enugu. We're hoping to follow up on that, and um, I'm sure when next you join us, you will have more details. But let's look at the Daily Sun newspaper and see what we can get from there. Afeni Ferrer Ohaneze Arewa fight over restructuring. And then it has, it will split Nigeria, says ex-ACF scribe. Sudden middle belt, other groups dismiss claim. Those are some of the uh, rider to the story. Reps grill Fashola over second Niger bridge, others. And then we have the end SARS. Buhari seeks monarch support to meet protesters demand. Uh, there are more, um, the... Um, U.S. election, um, the Sun is telling us this morning, Biden maintains lead as vote counting continues. Um, Trump vows to go to court in states. Democratic candidate won. I think we'll, we'll get back to the restructuring, which is the big one on your screen right now. But um, Aisha, I want to take your two cents on what's happening in the U.S. at the moment with the election. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, if I may come in, on the issue of uh, restructuring, I think for me what is very important is that we really need to sit down as a nation and have what I call the Nigerian talk. We need to sit down and say, okay, we did, the amalgamation happened in 1914. It's over 100 years now. And we're talking about 106 years. Do we really want this union to work? Because saying that one Nigeria is sacrosanct, no, it's not. One Nigeria is not sacrosanct. What is sacrosanct is good governance, accountability, and transparency. What is sacrosanct is development of the nation and the protection of lives and properties. And if we are not getting that, then we need to have a conversation. Uh, restructuring has been going, talk, talk of restructuring has been going on for long. Uh, the APC government came with the premise that they were going to do restructuring and they haven't done anything. I am one person who knows that there is no region in Nigeria that cannot survive on its own. Every region is blessed with everything needed to have a great a, a nation. The only thing that Nigeria has been cursed with is leadership, bad leadership. And uh, going back to what is happening in the US today, we look at it and we know that indeed leadership is everything. What is happening in US today, none of us ever thought we could see something like this until they voted in the kind of person they voted in right now. And we are hearing in US talk of going to Supreme Court. I remember when Al Gore and Bush, you know, had their election and people were like, oh, there were a little bit of this. Al Gore was like, oh no, there's no need because what? The, 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 the nation was greater than a personal ambition. And so we, are, we too have had leaders who over the time has, haven't put the nation above their personal ambition. And today we see even in the US where people had to board up their offices and places of business in anticipation of violence during the election. They are sitting on tenter hall. So that says to us that leadership indeed is everything. And for us to fix uh, Nigeria, we have to fix politics. And we must begin to put people with capacity, competence, and character in places of leadership. That's the reason why they will not say they will do the restructuring before they get into government. And then when they get into government, due to lack of character, they will not actually uh, go and, and, and have uh, that being done. All right, Aisha. All right, I think we can uh, quickly squeeze one or two in from the Guardian newspapers this morning. Uh, the Senate queries Aso Villa over medical bills abroad. Uh, that's uh, the big story we can uh, see over there on the Guardian. And also, Biden pre presidency may review visa ban. Uh, world's biggest democracy suffers setback, and Democrats support Nigeria's WTO bid. Uh, one or two others. Uh, is there anything else? I think lawmakers ask officials to ensure the president uses official clinic. NMA opposes restrictions, says a choice is personal. Uh, that's uh, most of what we can find. Okay, Nigerian film, Yimofe, wins audience award in Spain, best fiction in Brazil. And coronavirus, Lassa, yellow fever, not behind Delta, and Inugu mystery death, says the, N, uh, says the NC. Uh, DC. Um, all right, uh, Aisha, I think we can, um, we've spoken on most of these stories already, but I, you may want to extend your thoughts on uh, the ASO uh, clinic and the possibility of uh, completely cutting off medical trips abroad and medical tourism for 
uh, members of, uh, the, uh, of government, basically. Uh, how possible do you think that still is uh, with the way it looks? Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't get enough of that. I think I did hear uh, the Aso Clinic, uh, uh, the issue of, uh, and then medical tourism. So I'll just take from where I think you're, you're trying to, to ask me. I, I think basically, like I've said earlier on, there's too much billions that are being budgeted for the Aso Clinic, and yet, yet uh, there's, uh, there's no drugs are being bought there. You find the, the equipment aren't even working. There's really, even when people go there for medication, you have to go outside to go and do some basic tests. I've had people who are who, who, who go there and they, they have to go elsewhere. The wife of the president from years ago did come out to say there was nothing and there, but then not you find that at the end of the day, you know, the corruption is going on. Nobody is doing anything. The president isn't doing anything. No one is. By the way, Nigeria has did also has worsened uh, uh, in, uh, the corruption uh, uh, on, on corruption even uh, during uh, uh, Buhari. So you begin to wonder what really is going. On. I think it's important if we're going to put a caveat to say that anybody who is a public officer must not go out for any medical treatment. They should all be treated here. And one of the things that is even absurd, you find that even a lot of governors who, ha who, have, read, who have finished their tenure, right, in their pension, it is there for them that they can get treatment anywhere in the world. I saw one of the this and I was aghast. They can get treatment and medical treatment anywhere in the world at the expense of the state from which they And then meanwhile, these are people who spent eight years, some of them eight years in, in, in government. They did nothing to improve the healthcare uh, system, and yet we, they are being rewarded for their bad behavior by being uh, going out. I think we need to put something in place that says that, look, if you're a public, uh, uh, either a public servant or uh, one of the uh, or an, uh, of, uh, elected official, you can't go out for, for medical tourism. If you right. want to fix the, the, the hospitals we have, fix the healthcare system, let everybody have that access to good quality. You know, most times they will say, oh, the poor will always die. It's because it's not, it's not ending in doing anybody. It's not village people. It's because we don't have good healthcare system. Okay. They quickly yeah, also. Everyone was forced to use the same healthcare system. We saw what happened. The rich also died. So yeah. it's not enemies that is killing the poor people. It's lack of good healthcare system in the country. Quickly, in, in less than a minute, if possible, also share how relevant a um, change in the visa uh, rules from the U.S. will be uh, if Joe Biden I'm eventually. I'm not telling you very well. Can you? I don't know if you can. Speak uh, uh, let's I just, just yes. Thank you so much, Aisha. Thank you for, uh, in spite of the limitations, being uh, part of the breakfast this morning. Thank you. All right. Do take care of yourself. Okay. Um, I agree with her. A lot of points that she made, I totally agree. Mm. Um, it's, it's unfair hearing of these uh, pensions that exist after eight years of governorship that, you know, millions of citizens will not be um, able to get some of these benefits all their lives. Um, but once you're done being a governor, you and your family member, your deputy governor, you know, and so many people attached to you get these benefits that a person who has worked for 35 years would never be able to, you know, assess. It's it's pretty unfair. Yeah, just a quick thought on the U.S. elections. Um, hate him or like him, Trump has, from records, gotten more votes this time than he got when he won the election. It also tells you that um, more people participated in this election in the US than in any other part. So I'm hoping that we'll have at least that um, um, reflection in our next election, that more young people will be awake oh, well, to we're, the we're, responsibility. We have three um, years to work towards that. Yes, indeed. And, and because of what we started our conversation with this morning, um, insurance, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I forgot where I parked my car. Uh, it was 10 p.m., I was heading home, and um, I got to the place that I thought I parked my, parked my car and I couldn't find it. Um, you so panicked. I had, um, so <laughs> I I had a mini imagine. heart attack, and then eventually, um, someone pointed you know out where I actually did park it. So that was a reminder for me that I need to go get some car insurance. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping that you know we can also, from the conversations that we've had this morning, encourage more business, more peer persons, more business owners, get yourself some level of insurance, any anything at all, you know, that is available that you can afford. I'm sure you can afford one or two of them. And it's also important um, while you're to get as much education as you can before you make a choice as to the kind of insurance absolutely. that you're going for, because sometimes some of them are so watered down, you end up thinking. 
Was I cheated? Absolutely. So please get an education and get people who know about insurance to, you know, guide you so you don't make mistakes that you might regret. And that's how we're going to wrap things up this morning on The Breakfast. We hope we've served you well. Otherwise, feel free to share your thoughts, your observations, and your comments uh, via all the communications channels showing our news. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.